<clears throat> All right, so excited about playing at home again. Um, hope we'll have the same type of crowd that we had last week. Similar game time. And um, this is a very challenging opponent. I know that they've lost a few in a row, but, you know, took LSU down to the wire and um, at LSU and have given us a lot of problems. I mean, they're up 42-7 or something and a half last year against us. So um, this is a really big challenge for us to play really well and um, contain these guys. You saw what they did to us last year, what they did to us three years ago. Um, so I'm um, excited for this this challenge before we get into the bye week. And uh, what's the challenges of trying to keep the team kind of level, kind of just like you said two years ago, had that loss, came back, had that big emotional win against Arkansas. How do you kind of – is there anything you can take from that, just the overall approach of keeping a team's emotions in check after the last week? Yeah, I mean, we spent a lot of – smart. I mean, I'm sure for two days they heard how great they were, you know, outside of here. Um, so, you know, made sure they saw we made a lot of mistakes in that game um, in all three phases. Way too many penalties, poor decisions, selfish decisions on some penalties um, because because players are frustrated. And, you know, that, that can't happen. So we have a lot to work on. And obviously going to be the third year in a row facing K.J. Jefferson for Arkansas. Just kind of what have you noticed just about his growth as, as a quarterback and just as a field general for Arkansas? His growth? I think he gets bigger every year. Um, I mean, this guy is – He's so hard to bring down um, and so challenging to play against and always brings his great game against us also. Um, so, you know, we got to tackle him really well. We got to cover because he makes so many plays out of rhythm, you know, by scrambling and uh, has really good vision downfield and very good accuracy. What, what can you say about Ulysses Bentley? I mean, he just seems to kind of be a spark off the bench. Why does he compliment Quinchon Judkins so well? Because uh, he does things right. He's a really good player that does things right. That's very consistent. Practices that way. The way he ran on that run is how he runs every day in practice. So um, it's awesome to see somebody like that doing so well. Whatever, over seven yards of carry. And, um, you know, he's a, he's a great kid. Like this is not a question. This is a statement. I kind of represent the older group of Ole Miss former players. LSU is always our nemesis and our big rivalry. So I want to thank you, the staff, and this team for, for what you did last week and how it, took, it turned out. Thank you. Well, thank you. That was, um, you know, really exciting for it to end that way. Obviously, I wish it would have ended it earlier, um, you know, and not left him any time on the clock and or – Caught the interception when he threw it to us, but you know maybe everything happens for a reason. So made it very dramatic and exciting. Some that I don't think anybody involved with our program will ever forget. So thanks for saying that. Anything up top? Lane, I, I know you guys are always talking about kind of the rat poison and and all that stuff. How would you assess you know after kind of a big emotional big win for the program with all the kind of national spotlight after that. How would you assess your guys' kind of response to just kind of wash that away, keep their head down, and keep themselves, you know, focus on the task at hand? Well, I think, you know, talking about, like, you know, everything happens for a reason. I think that we didn't play well in a lot of areas, special teams penalties, defensive disaster, um, you know, allows us to really make sure that, hey, we, we got a lot of work to do. Um, and offensive penalties in the game and um, some misreads and some runs that would have even been bigger. So the good part is that we didn't play great as a team. So sometimes you do play a great game, and then it's kind of hard to get their attention. So I think we got a lot of attention this morning on the tape. And then when it comes to kind of – you mentioned that Arkansas game from last year. For the guys on the team this year – that were part of that game last year. Do you use kind of how that game went as bulletin board material at all to kind of help fire your guys up? Not really bulletin board. I just use it as like saying it doesn't matter, you know, with Arkansas playing against Ole Miss, it doesn't matter what they've done before. Because if I remember right, I think the week before us, they lost to Liberty, you know, and didn't move the ball very well. And, um, and then they come out with us and look like a top five team in the country. So um, it doesn't matter what's, 
happen before, you know, so I did use that game as evidence about how these guys come to play against us. Lane, you may have answered part of that. Um, my next question on that one was just with you and Sam Pittman entering the league at the same time, I know every year is different, obviously, with personnel, transport portal, and whatnot. Is there kind of a common denominator of a Sam Pittman led team? Yeah, tough, physical. Um, you know, they've run the ball for the most part really well. They've got the running back back now. Um, so I'm sure they'll have more success running it maybe than they did early in the year. But um, his plays, his, to me, his team usually plays like how he is, you know, O line coach mentality and really tough and physical. Lane, how does what you've seen from Jackson so far compare with, I guess, your expectations of him going into the season? Uh, I think Jackson's played really well. I think that, you know, we didn't have a lot of help for him, um, you know, without with everybody not being healthy at Alabama. Um, so I think he's done a really good job. And, you know, not to go backwards, but in that game, two plays in the Alabama game that he'd love to take back and was threw the ball really well and very competitive um, Saturday. You know, he probably changed, you know, two of those deeper throws that are a little bit under throwing that, you know, um, end up being incompletions. But he played great in his mentality of how he played and jumping over the guy as the last play of the third quarter is awesome for your team. You said after the LSU game that you challenged the offense really hard last week. Will you do the same thing to the defense this week, obviously? Yeah, that's what we did this morning. You know, just use that as an example of, you know, offense didn't play very well at all two weeks ago and then had a really good week of practice and um, played a lot better. So um, just did the same thing for the defense today. Uh, how much, I mean, to see the offense kind of perform the way that it did on Saturday, how much from that performance do you think that can be translated into future weeks that, you know, excited you? Well, it's exciting to know they're all there for now as far as, you know, um, Priest Corn, you know, having an injury and then surgery and then Trey having an injury and surgery and Zakari surgery. And so to know they're all there and, um, you know, that's the first time really. I mean, Alabama Trey really shouldn't even gone in. He just played a couple of plays and Priest Corn's first time playing at all for us. So to see them all the pieces in there together was exciting Saturday. You know, that's kind of what we had pictured it looking like um in the off season watching them practice. All right. Thanks, guys. We'll have players in shortly.